I'm Meg. I'm taking on projects I once doubted I was capable of. Today, I'm attempting to refinish my curb rashed and pitted wheels. Well, that's a nice big gouge. my garage. I hope you had a good week. So winter is officially over and I gotta get my studs off of my car. But I don't love my summer wheels and the tires are toast. So I ended up picking up some new wheels and they're in pretty good shape. They just need to be cleaned up. However, I am hoping to get some money back for my old wheels, but they are in pretty rough shape. So my plan is to refinish them and try and take care of some of this curb rash, pretty it up and hopefully get them sold. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is jack up the car because I wanna see if these wheels are actually gonna fit because that'll change kind of the trajectory of how I go about doing things. There we go, that's off the ground. So these new wheels I got I didn't film it, the interaction, because it was a little awkward. The guy sold them, was selling them on Marketplace, and uh, he, I guess, forgot we had already started a conversation, and at first he didn't want to accept my offer for a hundred bucks for the wheels, and then he did, and met up with him, and he was a kind of a strange dude, but hey, got him for a hundred bucks, down from 200, so I think it was a pretty sweet deal. my center bore spacers, center bore things. I grab those out of my car park box. What do I do with them? I know I put them in a Ziploc bag. Oh, they're there. Okay. So this goes on here, but my plan is put the wheel on and then very, very gently lower the car onto the rubber mat and we'll see if these wheels are gonna fit. Good. Hmm. Well, the guy did say it was a five by 112 spacing, which is the correct fit for my car. Maybe I need a different size cap, or maybe is it just gonna fit on like this? Okay. Yeah, maybe it doesn't need the center spacing thing. No. <laughs> I don't think it, he listed this correctly. My plan is failing. See the holes? They're not all lining up. So that one kind of lined up, but that one definitely does not line up. And neither does that one. Facebook Marketplace strikes again. Unfortunately, it's the wrong bolt pattern. These are actually a bit bigger and they're not gonna fit my car. And thankfully I do have his phone number, so I have texted him. I'm hoping to hear back from him, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. But for the time being, I can't really go any further right now and I'm gonna try and look for some new wheels before I do all of this swap around. So I'm gonna go do some research and I'll be back another day. Well, it's the next day and surprise, surprise, the guy who sold me those wheels is not getting back to me. So I'm just gonna sell those wheels myself and move on. I'm going to continue refinishing my old wheels and maybe I'll like them a little more once they're redone. But the first step is getting the tires off the wheels. Now, normally you'd take them to a shop and get them removed, but there is a DIY way of doing it. So I watched a couple YouTube videos last night and it does seem a little sketchy, but I want to give it a go anyways. Let's take a look at these wheels. Here are my old wheels. If you see here, this part of the wheel comes up. It's a little bit higher of a profile. And so it does make it a lot easier to hit the curves. <laughs> That's a nice big gouge right there. Good pitting there. Well, that's a nice big gouge. 
pretty damaged as well. All in the same kind of spots on this high edge there. I did get these used and they were already curb rash, so not all of these scratches were me, but I definitely added to them. Part that I don't like about them is that they're two-toned. The black and silver kind of throws me off, so I think I may make them either completely silver or completely black. I'll have to see what's available. So you can see here, it's very bald on this side. Pretty decent tread left on this side. And they're worn pretty unevenly. <laughs> it's time to try and take these tires off and it's gonna involve a two by four and my car. But before we get the car, I'm gonna let the air out of these tires and hopefully we'll be able to get these off. So I have this valve stem, valve core, valve stem removal tool. Apparently it's super easy to use. I've never used it before. And we want to remove the valve stem and let the air out. So let's try that. This end. I, I don't really. Oh, okay. Maybe just turn it. Oh, God. Okay. Am I supposed to take the whole thing out? I don't know. That's what came out. All right, next one. <laughs> ah, I don't like jump scares. safety glasses, but I didn't really think of it until now. I just copied what the guy did in the YouTube video and he just let her buck, so that's what I did. Anyways, now comes the sketchy and the fun part. <laughs> it's supposed to be kind of like that. And then you drive up it and it's supposed to press the bead off. But first, we need some soapy water. Got some soapy water. Hey, that's enough. I don't know. <laughs> Should we try this? I'm uh, no nervous. At least I'm in the car. Maybe I do need that 4x4. All right, well that 2x3 did not work and it's just gonna keep snapping. So let's go get a 4x4 from Home Depot. Let's get this back home and see what we can do with it. There we go. Okay. okay, well I think this eight foot is gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna cut it down to six feet and then I'm gonna cut an angle cut so that I can build kind of a ramp for my car to drive up. Six feet. I wonder if that's even good. Okay. Good again. Thankfully, this doesn't have to be a very clean cut. 
How do we do this? I measure it five feet all the way around. Maybe I just cut on a complete angle like that. Should I make sure I'm cutting the same angle both ways? <laughs> that this side. Okay, well I just went and looked up a video on how to make a ramp and this is not the right way to do it. If I do it this way, that tip on the end is just gonna snap off because there's gonna be a gap between the concrete and the bottom of the ramp. So I've gotta try and do this in a different way. Something like this. That. Draw a line like that, and cut this part off, this part will go, and then this part will be on the ground flat. Like that. Maybe. Okay, that doesn't work. What am I doing wrong? Let's cut the other side, maybe we'll just cut that piece off and keep going. <laughs> I don't know, I must be doing something wrong. Okay, let's just cut this piece off. <laughs> we'll just do a couple extra cuts. the wrong side. I cut the wrong side off! <laughs> what did I say? Measure twice, cut once. Let's cut this off and try this again. Running out of ramp here. Huh. Why cut it if I can just drag it? Why don't we just try? Popped it off the feed. Sweet! Maybe I'll put boots on for this part. <laughs> there we go. Okay, well it's all off on that side. Now I just have to flip it over and do the other side. some of those tire forks. Oh, we need more soapy water. As if this is gonna do everything for me. Oh wow, this is gonna be <laughs> tricky. So I just looked up some videos. It looks like they went this way. use some gloves. Put some safety glasses on just in case. Who knows what we're gonna encounter. <laughs> Flying spoons or something? Oh, exactly. 
Okay. Just keep working our way around, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This isn't too bad, right? Higher, dude. Easier. There you go. Just need some muscle. There we go. There, like that. Okay, I think we got it all off on that one side. Let's try this other side. Oh. rest of the other two while we have the car in position. Down. 
we got one more wheel to do. No. No. No, it's inside. Oh, There, now it's getting easier, huh? valve stems that has to be removed and it has to be cut from this back side so I do that first and I don't see any wheel weights but it doesn't mean that there aren't some hidden so I'll keep my eyes peeled as I'm removing these valve stems. I'm gonna cut this. It's kind of hard to cut than I thought. Cut the Back side off of that. Oh, well that was super easy. The other guy in the video I watched, he had to stand on the wheel to pull it out. Let's see if the other four are gonna be that simple. Here to that. So, that right there. I think those are wheel weights. Oh, it looks like this is, they had old wheel weights on there before. We'll get all the weights off at the same time. Cut this one. Kind of an awkward thing to cut. Just chopping it into pieces here. There. Sweet. Chop, come on. There. Pinch and rip. Ah, piece of cake. There. There we go. All four valve stems out. Try and get these weights off. Not too bad. It's gonna be some glue residue to clean off, but that is totally doable. There you go. So yeah, it looks like they're just stuck on with some like adhesive tape. The next thing is to clean the wheels. And I've got some warm soapy water with some Dawn dish soap, and then we'll get to sanding them. Do this. cleaning day today. Yeah, that is dirty. We're gonna fill up that whole garbage bin today, I bet you. If you haven't done proper prep, then you're going to be sad with your results. Kind of like what happened with my F-150 bumpers. Had I spent a little bit more time and done a little bit more research on prep, it may have lasted a little longer. All right, well this is decently clean for now. I still have to sand it and then do a thorough clean afterwards. So I'm gonna set this one aside and I'll take care of those other three. So the wheels are looking much cleaner. 
but we still have all these scratches to take care of and, that, and all of that. So we got to get all the dirt out of that and try and clean that up a little bit more before we go and fill it with Bondo. So I have some supplies here. I've got a little wire brush for the drill. So I'm gonna use that on some of the deeper blemishes. And then I have some sanding sponges. I surprisingly don't have any sandpaper. So I may have to go to Canadian Tire and get some of that, but I'm gonna try and use what we have here and then we'll go to Canadian Tire and get the rest of the supplies. And we're gonna want some glasses. Now we are safe. And I'm just going around to every pillar, every whatever these are called, and just looking at every single angle to see if there's any grooves or ridges that need to be taken care of with the wire brush. I think I may go up to Canadian Tire and get some better sandpaper because this sanding sponge is almost too fine and I want to do this properly. The flowers are starting to bloom. Metal reinforced filler. Haiti grit. 320 grit, wheel paint, graphite. Graphite could be cool. Clear coat, filler and sandable primer. And we've got glazing spot putty. I might not need this. I'll get it anyways, I can always return it. All right, well, I got all the supplies I'll need. So let's get back to the garage and get this started. All right, let's get to sanding. That's looking way better. Whoa. How'd you get out of there? That's way better. to give them their final clean before the Bondo goes on. We want to get this pretty pristine clean apparently and since I spent most of the day sanding I'm going to do as good of a job as I can on this. All right well that is pretty good. This wheel is all clean. It's honestly clean enough to eat off of. It may seem excessive to do all this cleaning but it was stressed greatly to the point where no dirt or dust was coming off on a white paper towel. So I actually started working today at 10.30 and it's now 6.45 and this is all I've been doing. And it's funny, whenever you watch YouTube videos and how-tos, you always think, oh, it's a breeze, it'll take me a couple hours, it'll take me half a day. No, it's not the case. Here are the clean and shiny wheels. They are ready for Bondo. And my prediction was correct. We have a full bin of paper towels. That was one and a half rolls of paper towels today. <laughs> All right, well, today was a big cleaning day. So tomorrow morning, we will get Bondo on these wheels. See you in the morning. Today, I'm going to be finishing up the refinished job on my wheels. I've got some metal reinforced Bondo here with the hardener and I've got a cardboard box that I've wrapped in parchment paper. Putty knives and we're gonna be doing some sanding and some cleaning and some more sanding and some more cleaning and then some painting. And we're gonna get these tire or these wheels ready for tires. So once this 
starts going. <laughs> Gonna have to move quite quickly because I think I only have about 15 minutes once this is all applied to apply it to the wheels. Thankfully, we don't have a ton of deep grooves to do with this. So I'm only gonna use half of what they recommend here to mix. Oh, it's like a gray putty. Oh, it stinks. Yeah, that does not smell good. Okay, lid, here. Good, scoop some of you out onto this lid. Okay, I think that's good. We want 18 drops of this. I found some other glasses. One, two, three, four, 16, 17, 18. You don't want to get air bubbles in there. So I'm fold it and work it in, scrape it off. I don't really know what I'm doing, but we're just, uh, we're experimenting. <laughs> it's always nerve wracking trying something for the first time, but hey, this is how you learn things and really, all right to make mistakes. Learn by doing. Okay, let's bring it over there. So I'm only gonna be using the Bondo on these deep scratches and grooves and the curb rash that is very deep. I'm just gonna apply a tiny little bit there. Dings and dents and things, and you wanna press it in. Just kind of painting it on like putty. Let's move on to the next one. Push it in there. Maybe I'll get my putty knife. Oh yeah, okay, so it's actually a lot easier with this. This stuff does harden relatively quickly. Oh, it is getting really hard. Oh no, I might need to mix more. It's unfortunately turning to a bit of a clay. So I'm gonna scoop this off and I'm gonna mix some more. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, we're gonna move a little more quickly this time. That's good, we'll do this side. Dent here. Build that up. That one's gonna be a bit tricky. Try and form it like a sculptor. I think that's good. All right, well, I'm gonna leave it for 20 to 30 minutes so that it can cure up and then we'll get to sanding. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. I've got some 80 grit sandpaper wrapped around a sanding sponge so that it's nice and flat. And I'm just gonna sand away at this Bondo and see if we can get it all nice and smooth. Yeah, that's working amazingly well. Wow, what a difference. Okay, this product is awesome. That is so smooth. Look at that. I'm just doing a little bit at a time because I don't want to take away too much product. And because there's this rounded edge here, I'm just trying to be very careful about how I approach the sanding of this. Look at that. So this one probably had the most damage. So this definitely has the most Bondo on it. Okay, 320 grit time. <laughs> All right, well, these look and feel amazing. They're so smooth. And I can't feel any ridges, grooves, dents, anything. So I'm actually not gonna do any additional spot treatment. I'm gonna clean them, sand the inside of the barrel, and then we'll get to priming. So 
I'm just taping off where the wheel cap goes onto the wheel so that the threads don't get painted. There you go. We'll start with the barrels and then we'll do the wheel faces. Okay, here goes nothing. Splatters, but I think we'll be okay. That's looking good. turned out better than I expected. There are a couple imperfections, but you can only see them when you're like a foot away. And if anyone's a foot away from my car, then they are too close. So I'm not going to sand them. I'm just going to let them cure up for about an hour and then I'll be back to paint them. All right. Well, it's the next morning because last night after I waited that hour, it was getting late and I was hungry and tired. So I figured I'd wait till the morning. And this is Honestly, just the reality of doing things yourself for the first time, it always takes way longer than you plan for and way longer than people tell you on the internet. So here we are. So we're going to be painting these today and I'm going to get a clear coat on them and they're going to dry for two days after that. Then we'll get them taken down to the city so that tires can be mounted to them. I am super excited with how all this is coming together. Let's get right into it. I gotta say, the painting part is kind of the most nerve-wracking because this is like the final bit and everything looks so good right now, I don't want to do anything to ruin it. <laughs> Just like the primer, we're going to do light coats and then we'll do multiple coats. Keep doing it nice and slowly with calmness and 
and confidence. <laughs> Off the end. More than half. Cover it right up. So that drip is completely gone. It just disappeared with more paint. Those look so good. I'm so happy. So I'm gonna leave that for an hour to dry and then I'll apply a clear coat. It smells so bad in here. Before I put my mask on, I barely took one breath and was like, oh god, mask on. The wheels look so good. I am blown away. I can't believe I did this this well. <laughs> this was so much fun. We're gonna be leaving these for two days so that they can harden and cure up. And then we'll take them to a tire shop to get new tires mounted on them and get these on my car. I'm so excited. I'll see you in a few days. Here's the car before. So just got to the tire store and they promised me they wouldn't scratch the new wheels, so <laughs> fingers crossed. That's a lot of tires. It looks so good! I am stoked on how those turned out. Honestly, I am so stoked with how well this turned out. I'd even say this is my most successful project yet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week.